more believable because like I keep seeing like videos out where it's like oh Satan you know Resan doesn't have anything against or, like on you or whatever I'm like uh uh-uh. uh are you no, kidding me no 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 oh That's my god no boss over here no Resan is a god compared to no. Satan no like oh my god. let me say something for you <laughs> you are you have read Aquatar several times I yeah. could not get past book two. But Resand was the only reason why I liked that book. Even yeah. book two. I read book two because of him, because I knew that's where it was going. Resand yeah. is not even on the page as much as Zayden is, and he is infinitely more interesting. Thank not you. even. I'm not so even. sorry to anyone listening. Zayden is not the new boo no. He is not taken over. No. No. Hi everyone! <laughs> Welcome to the Novel Universe with Don and Ashley. Uh, we are coming back in from a summer hiatus that was unexpected from our team over here. I'm sorry, Don. It's me. But <laughs> <laughs> but we are back in full swing, and we are here to talk to you guys about the fourth wing that's streaming all over the internet by Rebecca Yaros. So, of course, Don and I hopped on this trend because we saw it on TikTok and BookTok and everyone was talking about it. We're like, what's going on with this book? So, of course, we read it. And, of course, we have tea that we want to talk about with this book, as always. So, again, if you guys are new here, we uh, generally go through our book discussion without any spoilers first. And then we'll tell you when we're going to spoil things. So, you can either choose to hop out and not listen to our spoiler section or you can stay along for the ride if you want to hear my and Don's responses to everything. Don and I do not discuss the book before we come into our podcast, so everything is going to be live and new to you as it is to us within this book talk. So without further ado, The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. <laughs> Enemies to lovers, war college, dragons, magic me, oh my, yes, this is exactly what is all inside of this book. Um, if any of that tickles your fancy, this is a book for you. It is set uh, within the world of Violet Soringale, and she is our main protagonist, and she is, of course, put on a journey that she was not ready to be on. She was set up to be a scribe, and then her mother, who is a general, of the writer's quadrant of Navarro is going to basically tell her that um, all Sorendales are writers. So she has to buckle up and get ready to go to buy, um, what is it called? Bethsgaia College. I, we are going to mispronounce all of these names. So she, of course, is taken on a different journey than she had already prepared for. Um, there is a bunch of dragons within this book if you will the one number one thing is a dragon without its writer is a tragedy and a writer without its dragon is dead so there is a whole bunch of stuff that will kind of give you a reminiscent of feelings between hunger games and dauntless and a little bit of i don't want to say hogwarts it's not even in that realm at this particular point in time because it's a little bit more in depth if you will so essentially she's sent off to this college where she has to basically compete to be a writer in the writer's quadrant because if she dies oh well she's just kind of taken out as a weakling so that's where we're at and a dragon is is uh someone who's going to choose you Okay. If they want, you don't choose your dragon. The dragon chooses you. Girl, right it's, all stuff. it's terrible, isn't it? Yes. This you is know, terrible. No. Yeah. But that's essentially all <laughs> that I'm going to say because it's just going <laughs> to Everybody know what this damn book is about, girl. Uh-huh. Anyway, you like dragons? There you go. But, yeah, there's a little bit more behind the scenes. So, Dawn, what did you rate this book? All right, so I read this book on TikTok. I like did like updates, live live updates as I was reading it, and at the end, I think I rated it a two point five. Uh, but as I think about the book and go back and read my notes and everything, I'm gonna give it to a one point five. I'm sorry, this book was horrible. I I'm one of those people that did not like this book at all. 
And you probably gave it a four and a half. I'm like, Ashley probably loved this book. <laughs> so, like, when I was going through this, right, I was like, there's no way Dawn is in love with this book. There's no, unless, unless she takes away a critical eye, unless she takes away a critical eye for this, I could see her not enjoying it as much. So... Again, guys, I have, we have, we have a little bit of ideas as to, like, what each other really likes because we've done this for a while. Um, but, yeah, doesn't surprise me, Dawn. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, I'm, really glad. I'm glad. I'm glad I think it, it would have surprised me if you were like, oh, my gosh, I loved it. I would have been like, oh, what? <laughs> wow. mm-hmm. You know, so let's get into what, what did you give it? did not like about you didn't this say book. What you, you didn't say what you rated it. A four point five, but you already said it. I was guessing. You were like, Ashley, I get a four point five. I said, I just said it. <laughs> okay, wow. I think this might be the greatest disparity of rating. I think from Blood and Ash was pretty big, but I, I think this, I don't know. All right, okay. <laughs> Dislikes. Don is gonna have a, a hoopla of lips. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. For my- I feel like I might know the main issues you might have with this book. Because if I have to, like, pull it aside for, like, a critical assessment, I feel like I know what they are. You know, what was your first dislike? Even if I don't read this with a critical eye, because this is fluff, I have no problem with fluff, but fluff still has to follow rules. Like, I consider Throne of Glass fluff. I'm sorry, I do. I love Throne of Glass. I gave most of them fives. So... We can't even say critical eye because this isn't even good for <laughs> fluff's sake. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, my, one of my major dislikes that you already, I'm pretty sure, you know, um, take a guess. What do you think my first one is? <laughs> this doesn't, this is not new adult. It walks the line between adult and YA. Oh and they no. Just slap together and That's not it. the major one. The major the one is, is what? The lack of adjustment. There's no in depth discussion of characters no oh okay well now there is no world building in this book this is a fantasy fantasy yeah, no, it's not. if it's, you <laughs> it's more romance than it is fantasy at this point in time i don't i don't care if you're gonna classify your book as fantasy you need to have world building i am sorry and if you read this book i'm sorry if you read this book and you uttered the words i love the world building you are wrong there is no world building in this book at all i'm sorry not even a little bit i felt like becky i'm just gonna call her becky becky with the good hair she just sat down at her desk and was like i want to write a romance with dragons somebody on tiktok said this is basically a contemporary with dragons and a Mm -hmm. contemporary romance with dragons there's no fantasy here. There's no world building here. I could not tell you who the king was, why they were in a war, what the world outside of the military school was called, what other nations were called. I couldn't tell you anything because no world building. Yeah, it's a se- it's a second like little bit of fluff in the background. It's definitely not world building, which like I love world building. That's why I love fantasy. I would not consider this a fantasy world building book, which is usually what fantasy is. I would consider this a dragon romance, if you will. Like it's not, it's, it's not, it, there is no actual like talk about the different civilizations, you know, why they're at war. Like you said, it's just, everything's kind of an afterthought because I don't think it's meant to be the exact like premise of the book, which is a shame because she spent so much time on how like in depth a lot of the other stuff is. It's like, well, what happened to your world? Like we're just at school. That's, that's all I knew. Like it was kind of like when we read, um, was the other one that we just read, like the, the college, were they in this the magic school? Do you know what I'm talking about? The oh, one we didn't the deadly like? education. Oh shoot! Deadly education. Yes, deadly education. Where, where they were literally just inside of the school. That's what I felt like. I felt like we were just inside of Vasgaev College. That's it. Like we didn't know anything else about the world outside, in any capacity. But that book had world building. This book doesn't. 
Really? That book had oh, that book had way better writing than this book. Did you get high battery with that? Oh, and and I didn't even like Deadly Education. I actually liked the first book. I didn't like the second one. Um, oh yeah, infinitely better than this book. Okay, I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Your turn. <laughs> um, I definitely like. I'm curious. The issues that I have with this book are more so, like, it does walk, like I was saying, it does walk that line between, like, this adult and YA. It read more YA. Was I upset about it? No. I think it's just, like, like a personal thing, but it's, like, I would not call this new adult. I wouldn't call this new adult. I just thought that it was more hyped up spicy scenes in a YA book because it read like that Mm -hmm. versus it being adult. Like when I think of like a fantasy um, world book, like I think of like N.K. Jemisin, right? Or Brandon Sanderson or like all these other ones where I'm like, that is like in your face fantasy world development. And because the world matters, everything around you matters. You have to pay attention to what's going on. Um, and I would have liked more of that because I feel like I would have understood the layout of, you know, just all the different um, mythology that's there, right? Like all these different partners that are all kind of working with each other. It's just kind of like, oh, do we need to worry about that? Oh, do we need to worry about, oh, well, well why does it keep coming up? Oh, maybe we need to worry about it. You know, so it's like that part, I feel like she really did lack in those areas because yeah like I'm not upset about it being more reading like that but I am upset with it because it's like I don't call it new adult it's not new adult <laughs> like no. either just that you can't really walk that line anymore yeah that's not it's I don't know um that was something for me that I was not a super big fan of in world building I mean like yeah Okay, well, what, what, what's all this outside stuff? Where did that come from? <laughs> it's like, oh, do we need to pay? Oh, we need to pay attention to that. Oh, do we? All right, I'm going to say something a little controversial, but brave. I don't okay, think, I don't think that she planned this book out. I think she just sat at her desk and said, I want to write a romance set in a military school with some dragons. She did not have any plan of character like we already talked about no plan of the world there there is nothing creative about this book nothing the girl being um disabled i've read that before there's she didn't do anything new with that she just has a a disability i've never read before okay uh the dragons nothing new there the romance read that been there done that the school setting She's not adding anything new there. The conflict, nothing new there. Like, there is zero creativity in this book. Her world makes no sense. And I'm going to say something that everybody's probably already heard if you have listened to any negative review. How do you have a war college or a war military military whatever that you are drafted in, you are at war... And you kill your soldiers. What is that? That makes no sense. That's why I'm like, she did not plan this out. She's just trying to like, have all these huge plot points. That right there lost me. Okay. There's so, no plan. So to, talk, to, to touch on two of your points, because I disagree okay. on some area, only because I did listen to an interview like okay. from her. This is a five book series. Oh, garbage. So, I call bullshit on that. Keep going. Go ahead. Yeah. So, and then the um, the chronic illness that Violet has is actually her illness that her and her sons have. I'm so not that's shocked. why it's in this book. I'm, I'm, I so, said that's fine. That's fine. I so just, that, it's just that, that a lot of people. Learning it, no, you're okay. Go ahead. I'm just saying just a lot of people are like, oh, but there's disability rep. Other books have disability rep too. That's not oh, special okay. to this book. I do see your point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. This it is. It. I wish it was talked about more. Like I wish it was brought up more in a different way because it is almost like she's almost played as like she is really breakable, but yet she's not at the same time because they keep healing her. 
Like, she's just fragile. And I'm like, but why is she fragile? There is no explanation. But I actually went into, like, what the actual chronic illness is Mm -hmm. that is supposed to be portrayed in this book. And they would have just went a little bit deeper with it. It would have made sense. Because her chronic illness is, like, she basically has, like, overly flexible joints and super stretchy skin. So if she has, like, a wound to her... She can't, like, like, her skin can't, like, hold, like, stitches together because it's so, so she's just going to stretch out versus, like, hold it in together. And her joint, that's why, like, if she trips, like, she's going to break something because they're overly flexible. So she's going to land hard and hurt herself. So it's like, but, like, if I would have understood that versus her just being delicate, like or whatever like I totally get it like because it is just a touch point the way that it's brought up in the book it's not done well so I I would agree with you on that little part but the rest of it though like yes that part did not make sense it did remind me of Dauntless because like like literally everything goes when you get taken over like like you you can get killed that's normal it's fine if you don't make it when you're jumping from the train over like Oops. Oh well. There goes another one. They're you not know, there at, isn't really They're not at huh? war. They're not at war in Divergent. No, but they're prepping for like it. Do you know what I mean? Are they? So it's like in Divergent? Is a war in the first book? It's imminent. They're like we are at war. We have to choose factions. I think so. I don't think so. I could be totally wrong though. I think the but- government was the enemy and no one knew that the government was the enemy. So, no, they were not at war. Okay. I'll let, like I said, I'll let you have it. It's fine. What's your next point? Oh, oh, we're just getting started here, folks. Um, okay. So, well, this, it's not a small thing. Well, it is a small thing. This is a personal thing. In my opinion, fantasy should not be written in first person. Let's just get that out the way. It should always be in third person. I hate first person fantasy um I don't think she's a good writer because it's all tell and no show so we're just constantly told that Violet is weak like you like the way you were describing her condition we're just being told that all the time um that's not good writing because it you, you just don't feel anything after it's hard to explain but when you read for a long time and I'm not talking to you Ashley I'm talking to like people who love this book who are new to reading I think that's part of one of the reasons why it's so hype these are these people are new to fantasy and like oh my god this is amazing but once they start reading more fantasy they will start to distinguish a good good writing and bad writing and this is a lot of tell there's not a lot of show here um another thing that really bothered me was Becky would step on her own stakes so like there was a there was a lot of stakes high stakes in this book you know, the whole, just the whole dragon thing and dying is a high stake. And then, but then she would just like sabotage her own stakes. And so like one thing that stuck with me and I tried to find the moment, but I couldn't find it. It was a moment, I don't want to say too much, but um, something something's about to happen to Violet. And people are about to attack her. And it's it's a tense moment. You're like, oh my God, this is really bad. Something's gonna, something bad's gonna happen to her. And she makes this flippant comment. Come and get me, boys. Or I'm ready for you, dudes. Or something like that. And I'm like, you just totally killed the tension. Why would you do that? And the other thing I already mentioned with you're killing your own soldiers. You like, you have these high, high stakes. But then you, it just, I, I don't know. It just like, she's just like self-sabotaging her book. And she didn't need yeah. to do that. I think in, in relation to that, like, you know, again, like, it just goes down to like this is reading more YA and just how she's like setting it up for you. She's explaining it to you. She's using like really bad language to get her point across. Because there'd be times when like Violet would be talking to like Dane, you know, or Liam, or like Rylan or whomever, and it would just be like, I feel like I feel like we like lost our professionalism in what just happened. Like, you know, like there would just be little moments like that where you're like, where'd that come from? Like that wasn't like it wasn't a consistent tone of voice, if you will. Like all of a sudden, you know, now we're like, 
well, come and get me. Do you want to die today? You know, like, just, like, little stuff like that where you just be like, but yeah. it was done so good up until that point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I would agree, like, in that retrospect. There was another part where, like, there were a lot of characters in this book, right? There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of stuff going on. And it's like, I wish there would have been more character development in this book than what we got. There's not a lot. So don't expect a lot. Like, it's almost what I want to say. I don't know if, like, we're ever going to, like, I hope we get it. But it might just be, I don't know. I know I'm. I don't have high hopes for it. So it's almost like I have to like not take it seriously in a way and not read it in a certain way. I don't know. I don't going back to your, it's going to be a five book thing. And I call bullshit on that. We, we have run, we have read tons of books where there are several books in a series. Like I said, Throne of Glass, Akotar, and you can tell like when an author, and I don't know if I want to necessarily use Throne of Glass as an example here. Cause I don't think she realized she was going to get a seven book deal. But there are no, some books, didn't. yeah, where you can tell that an author knows they have at least three books and they yeah. set some groundwork. You're not going to give me a 600 page book and have no character development, no world building and say, oh, it's going to come in book two. No, no. Even mm-hmm. in Throne of Glass, we kind of know who Selena is. She's built up pretty well. We understand the world pretty well. You know, we have Dorian and Kale and, you know, they're dynamic. Like, I felt like. And I'm, I'm only comparing Throne of Glass to this book is because I felt, like I said, I felt like this book is more fluffy. It's Throne of Glass is fluffy. But yeah, well, even Throne in a book is one. Fluffy, but at least there is the beginning, middle, and an end. And they're, like everything is introduced to you at a pace that it should be introduced to you. Yeah. There's a lot introduced to us within this book that was almost like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like I didn't realize I was supposed to care about all of that. Like because it's not set up well. But it's like I had to read it through a lens of like, just just let it let like just just hear it out, hear out how the story is, and if I do it that way, it's relatively entertaining. No, it's personally. not. It's not, and I can't even do that. I couldn't like I I I knew what I was getting myself into when I read this book. I knew I had a feeling I was not going to like it. It was going to be incredibly fluffy, and I'm fine with that. But even. Even shutting off Critical Brain, Dawn, I, it still is a poorly written book. I just, once again, I feel like this woman had no plan. Zero plan. She just sat down and was like, I want to write a romance. Let's throw some dragons in here. Let's put them into college or military school. And, and that's it. Like, she did not take the time to think this book through. Mm-hmm. And Yeah. And to your credit, though, like, the, the areas that you are bringing up, like, you know, I, there's a there's a good portion of people that, that feel that way. And that's why, like, these, these make such great book conversations, though, is because it's like, let me hear your side. You hear my side. And yeah. it's, like, we should be willing to respect each other and how they like to read books and what works for them and what doesn't work for them. Yeah. You and know, I- but also to point out that like yeah that part is lacking am yeah. i okay with that Meh, I mean, no I'm not really getting, like, you know, I, or yes i understand the appeal i see why people like it but it's just so many better books written mm-hmm. that were actually thought out well that are yeah. it's not even get a percentage of the hype of this book and I'm sorry I don't think this book deserves the hype I'm sorry I don't it's not a good book there are so many more books that are similar to this that are infinitely better and my next point is there are no themes none and she has once again she's a self saboteur she had an excellent opportunity to develop the theme of children um like um suffering the sins of your parents great I have not seen that theme before in fantasy. Please. Right. Please. She does nothing with it. Nothing. Yeah. Um, the whole thing with Zaynan, is it Zaynan or Zayden? Zayden and Zayden and Dane. And how we have the one man who's just like treating her like a precious baby princess. And then we have another man who's supposedly her enemy, but he is letting her, you know, do her own thing, fight her own battles and not try and coddle her. Let's let's go somewhere with that. Drops yeah. it. 
totally drops it. The mother daughter situation. Nothing. Oh yeah, that's not even there. Nothing. No. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. No. No, I think I would agree with you on especially on that part. And there is some other issues with like the intensity of Zayden and Violet is almost like like I wish there was more behind like if we would have had like a POV switch, right? Like if we would have understood just a little bit about this tension situation, it would have made like it more believable. Cause like I keep seeing like videos out where it's like, Oh, Satan, you know, Resan doesn't have anything against or like on you or whatever. I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. Are you no, kidding me? No, no, no. Oh That's my god, no boss over here. No. Resan is a god compared to no. Satan. No. Like Oh, my, let me say something for you. You are you have read Aquatar several times. I yeah. could not get past book two, but Resand was the only reason why I like that book. Even yeah. book two, I read book two because of him because I knew that's where it was going. Resand yeah. is not even on the page as much as Zayden is, and he is infinitely more interesting. Thank not you. even. I'm so sorry to anyone listening. Zayden is not the new Boo Crow. He is not taken over. No, including the main two characters. I thought they were pretty flat. Let's talk about Jack, and he is a cartoon villain. Oh, and this is another another way as to how she sabotages her own stakes. Like, oh yeah. So once again, you need bodies to fight this imminent war, but it's okay to just kill people because oh well, they're weak anyway. And that's what Jack was doing. He's just killing people because they're weak. Why don't you yeah. let that guy go be a scribe or a healer or that doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense. And he was a cartoon villain. Once again, guys listening, I'm going to give you a lesson in villain writing. And this is coming from someone who has never written a book. Villains need to be sympathetic. They cannot yeah. be mean because they have nothing better to do. They have to have an origin story. They have to have a, a a backstory. If you go and you watch any fantasy any fantasy movie or TV show that you love, and there's a villain, the Joker, Cersei yeah. Lannister, like yeah. even Soprano, the guy, the main guy, they all have an origin story. So villains, if they do not have an origin story, they are a cartoon villain. That is shitty writing. Yeah, no, I think I agree with you 100% because it's even like, you know, we read like about the songbirds and snakes, which is literally it's President Snow's like POV beforehand. You fall in love with Snow and you feel for him so deeply because of everything that happened to create him to who he is. Like he's a likable character. That turns into now I'm sympathetic for him because of what he's had. You can call in like even Darth Vader from Star Wars. He was a saint. He was so beloved, but was corrupted with hate. Like all of this stuff. And even at the end, he's still caring for his son. I mean, come on. Come on. Like still even at the end, you know, so. Yes, Jack was annoying. I wanted to just, like, shoot him off because I was like, you just have a vendetta just because she's a Sorengale. I get that. I do. But, like, after the third, like, or fourth attempt on her life from this person, I was like, can we just squash him? Can we can we squash him? Like, does, is he a needed uh, person in the story? You know, and it's like, there's stuff that happens whatever but still it's like like you said she does drop the ball in those categories that i would have made this book like i can't give this book a five did i like it enough for me you know in some categories yes but i can't deny when when there's bad writing that's why i can't give it a five is because i am aware of those situations i have mucho respect for the authors that can write stuff and I don't, I feel like this is like a new generation of, of hype book lovers, right? Like everyone now is like immersed within like Moss's world and they've only read A Court of Thorns and Roses. They haven't read everything else that like leads up to what a good fantasy book is, right? They're not a part of the era of you know, Divergent and Hunger Games and all of this stuff that, like, we've lived through and we've seen it already. And it's like, they're like, this is the best book. 
No sunshine. There are greater books for you to read out there that is way more worth your your time. <laughs> you know, and you'll appreciate when you do read it and you'll go, oh, that's what I'm missing, you know? Yeah. Like, so with Dante, it's not like, as someone who loved the book, it's what she's saying is not from left field. That is, those are all valid points, 100%. So. I got more. You already mentioned Reads Like YA, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And going along with it, it's because the dialogue is very simplistic, yeah. uh, so yeah. that helps. I didn't like the banter. I thought it was lame. I didn't like the romance. There's nothing new to that romance. She got on my nerves with, the, oh, my God, he's going to kill me. Oh, my God, he's going to kill me. And then he'd be like, <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. I, I don't care enough to kill you. Oh, my God, he's going to kill me. Right. Okay. Um, the foreshadowing is for a fifth grader. I mean, like, oh, my God, it was so obvious uh she's the the whole chosen oneness that she has is ridiculous like every turn i'm like well of course this is going to happen to her of course that's going to be her power of course it's just like guys come on with the chosen one i hated that he called her violence she was never violent why did he give her that that was stupid sorry um and once again, this should be this should have just been a contemporary romance with dragons because a fantasy world you are to be like immersed in like the religion and the clothes and the language and they shouldn't be using twenty first century language. It takes you out of the story. Once again, she did not plan out this book, guys, because yeah. that is not a thing in fantasy unless you are doing urban fantasy. Which this is not. No, it's not. It's not. And I think I'd agree with you. There were, like, a few points where, like, the foreshadowing, I was like, mm, yep. And she she would. She would have that issue. She That, that would be her thing, you know? Um, so, yeah. I, I, yeah. I agree. And the last thing I'm going to say, because I have been watching, like, some TikToks and people... And they are like, they are treating this like Akotar with their theories. They're like, oh my God, oh my God, this theory, oh my God, uh, she was on the parapet. I didn't even talk about the damn parapet and how she, uh, uh, I'll, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Um, in, the like, in the like section, I have one like, um, they're like, oh my God, the wind was blowing when she was on the parapet. Was that her mom? And I'm like, all these theories, I'm like, y'all, hell no, that woman ain't thought long enough far enough into the future to even think of that but y'all just gave her some plot points y'all helped her out with your theories because there's no way she thought of that no way but oh they have so many theories i'm like y'all this is not an akotar this is not a crescent city book because we can do theories all freaking day with sarah j mass you can't do that with this no, no, uh-uh. that was not her mom up on the parapet. Uh-uh. Oh. No, it's called a storm. <laughs> it's called a storm, boo. <laughs> and that's the title of the podcast. It's called a storm, boo. Let me get a pen. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, like, that makes me mad because I've seen like some multiple like, you know, theories and all this other stuff. I'm like, that's a bunch of bull honky. That is a... <laughs> thing i've ever heard (laughs) only because here and here's why if we were supposed to suspect the mother we would have gotten some sort of something in relation to her power that she's you know has her signet from or that she's able to channel from her dragon no Oh, hell no. No, I am dying on that grave. No, I haven't heard that one. Are you kidding? This That's the main no, one I always hear. Look, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, do you have any others? I think we we hit no, nitpicks before we even got into nitpicks. I'm done. We just- I don't have any nitpicks. <laughs> Okay. Um, is there anything you did like, John? <laughs> and this is kind of like a backhanded like. I will say that she was creative with her with her info dumping. She had a homegirl on that parapet reciting world history. Who in the hell does that? I have never seen that before in my life. 
Therefore, I will give her a backhanded like as to being creative with her info dumping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really interesting. I think the one thing that I liked is that the dragons were not subject to the rules of the humans. I did like that part because they have like their own code and like all this other stuff that we're not going to talk about in this spoiler free section. But it's Mm -hmm. like, I appreciated that. Um, I also really did like the one relationship I did like was her and Liam's relationship only because that was the closest we got to like, is that her guard? Her guard. Yeah. Her guard. The only because I felt like we got more real moments with those two. So Mm -hmm. I, I did appreciate that point. Um, I'm all for death and gore. It just, I, I did. I, I will say this. Homegirl was not a fan of just letting everything be sunshine and roses when it did come to a big battle scene that we have. I did appreciate that there was a consequence to the battle because a lot of times when beloved authors that even I love, everyone will kind of skirt out okay, right? And it's like I appreciated that she was mindful enough that battles bring consequence, death will come with a battle so i did appreciate that that was like one of the nuggets where i was like i hate you but i but i love it at the same time you know it's not like reading you know um game of thrones where you fall in love with a character and then 30 pages later oh they did don't don't hold on to them they're gone like you know like it wasn't like that but um and i did like there is a more in-depth part that i personally liked is that like You know, scribes hold the knowledge to everything, right? You know, like, there's always the written knowledge knowledge that we have is always written down and it's always documented in some way. And when there's a corruption in the government, somehow, we just somehow seem to miss information. Mm -hmm. And I I do like that premise because I, I like figuring out why like why did we turn that way? Like, what's going on there? So I, I hope that that goes somewhere. But um, did I th- like some of the dragons? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, let's see. I mean, honestly, like, it's, it's it's an easy read. It's an easy read. I read it twice, and I enjoyed it each time, so. Yeah, that's because you don't got to use any brain power. Yeah, I, I know, but that's okay. I needed it in that moment. <laughs> um, And I, yeah. So, what is it? What is the other thing? There are a few other points that I feel like they're a little spoilery, so I'm just not going to talk about. But, I mean, overall, you got, I feel like this is great, though, because, like, there is this, this, uh, periodic, like, oh, no, my gosh, I cannot talk. There, <laughs> there is this big shift in the book world right now with those that love fourth wing and those that don't love fourth wing. And I think that we are able to at least discuss it in a good manner. And, you know, cause like, I just, I feel like everyone should be entitled to their opinion and that's what makes a good book discussion. Like, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. She's obviously doing something if we're all talking about it, you know, whether it's good or not. <laughs> I think it's more of her PR team that did a good job. I don't think she did anything. I, I feel like, um, with, I want her PR team. Yeah. Everybody that's wants her PR team. Look good. Everybody wants right? her PR team. Um, I feel like. What this is just a guess. What I think is going to happen is everyone's like, "Oh my God, this book is fabulous! This book is great!" And then they're going to get to book two, and they're going to be like, Ugh. and then they're going to get to book three, and they're going to be like, "Oh God, no, this is not good!" And and then she's going to be riding this high wave, and then she's going to come crashing down because people are not going to like the yeah. subsequent books because I'm, she's not a good writer. This is not good writing. I have, this is like I have literally, some... and I don't mean, I'm, when I say this is not good writing, I don't mean this as an opinion. I mean this as like yes. actual not good writing as like a profession. Like professional people would say this is not good writing. This is not just my opinion. This is a fact. I'm a librarian. I know good writing when I see it. This is not it. Mm-hmm. I do have some stipulations for book two, like that if like if I'm going to continue on this course, 
I have some some things that I need. Are you doing one of my things? This needs to, to happen. That I need, you know. So like, I I do need some things, um, in order for me to stay invested in the story. Well, tell because, us in the spoiler because I want to know. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about it in the spoiler, but we appreciate you guys so much for joining us. Can are you say, Team Don? I just want to say one thing. Yeah, are you Team Don or Team Ashley? Team Team Don is the haters. Team Ashley is the lovers. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, the, the Arulian Cycle by Rosaria Munda is quite similar to this. It takes place at a dragon school. Um, it is friends to lovers. It is dragons. And it is infinitely better. And that is good writing. So it's by Rosaria Munda. It is the first book is called Fireborn. And it is the Arulian oh Cycle my gosh, series. Yes. That one's a great one. Yes. Yes. And you may, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, it's okay. No, she's, she has a point, everybody. She does have a point because we did read that together and it was great. <laughs> we had lots of theories and things to discuss with that book because there were themes, good writing, character development, and world building. All things that this book could use. And hopefully, maybe book two will be both. I don't know, maybe. Maybe her, maybe, Yaros, if you're listening, maybe, you know, you'll listen to the people. <laughs> And, like, know what we need from these books in order for it to be a success, you know? Like, I don't know know how it's going to be five books, though. Like, I think that's a bunch of hoo-ha. Like, I don't know. Like, unless there's a whole bunch of crap that we don't know about, but five books? Yeah, because she hasn't made it We ain't doing that. No. No. Because if it is a Tracy Wolf, I'm walking out. She got a five-book deal. She did not intend this to be five books. The publisher was like, we're going to give you a buttloads of millions of dollars, but you need to make this into five books. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not mad at her for that, but good luck. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to happen. Unless she gets into the world building. I mean, honestly, like yeah. I... She's going to have yeah, to. Like, she's, like, unfor- like, I'm sorry, but maybe book two has to be the info dumped book of the world. I don't know. I felt like this Actually, maybe was. book three, because there's a few things, few things that I need in order to follow along in the story. I'm just All right. So, Let's get okay. to spoilers. We're going to be done with the non-spoiler section. But again, here to hear you guys' thoughts. Thanks for sticking around with us. We hope that you will join us in our next book talk. We do not have any sort of uh, book planned out yet, because Don and I have to re-figure out what we're going to do. If you have any suggestions, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next podcast. And if you're going to stick around, we are going to spoil in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. One. Don just saw Janet Jackson, so you know she's back on her game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I feel like we need to just get into, like, you know, what I need from book two. Okay. What do you think? Only because I feel like we've, like... A lot of this stuff has already been said, right? Like, there's so many areas where everyone's had so many opinions about all this different stuff. I honestly don't here's know. What I, here's what I need. Okay. I need... <clears throat> I need... I need Brennan's backstory. I need that. Because, you know, that was one part that I did not see coming was about about her brother. Now, I did see, like, some of the other stuff, like, you know, um, Zayden's going to pull her over. He's doing something he shouldn't be doing. Of course, they got a rebel alliance on the back end, you know, like, all of those things. You know, um, I didn't see her getting two dragons. Did I see her getting the most important one? Yes, absolutely, because it's Violet. You know, like, of course, she's going to get the, you know. But, like, his backstory, because he's been dead for years. Like, he's been gone four years so i want to know what has possessed him to not go back and tell like his sister like mira and violet like why are we not like why do we not go back for them like if you know that your mom is a terrible person like why have we not gone back for them i need to know that like because he's supposed to have this power that raises the dead right that's his power and it, it snuffed him out it's supposedly what happened. In the last battle with Zayden's dad, 
and all this stuff. Uh-huh. His power is supposed to, like was he was helping out another rider or whatever to save his best friend, and he supposedly died in that battle. So like Zayden's family um, blames uh, Violet's family for the death of his parents and all the other leaders, right? Whereas Violet's family blames them for Brennan's death. So there is something that happened between both sides that we don't know. And I think it has to do a lot with this whole Griffin and Vernon or Venon uh, Wyvern crap going on. Because in my opinion, I think that they knew about them and they went to tell, you know, the the uh, the mom and all this stuff. And she was like, you're not supposed to tell them about that. Well, yeah, because they're wreaking havoc. So you need to, we need to do something about it. And then they killed them to be quiet. That's my opinion. That's why I think that all happened. Because Violet's dad leaves her a book, you know, with all these stories in it that everyone's been told that these are just bedtime stories. These don't really exist. These are the things that they tell their kids when they go to bed. Like, and they stay in their beds or whatever. I'm like, Woo-hoo. no, them people are real. Like that, that, that's all real, yeah. you know? And then he leaves her this note and whatever. So I think that the knowledge of these creatures and this like suction of power and all this stuff, I think that has a lot to do with why there was a battle to begin with. And I don't think that Zayden was privy to that information. So he doesn't know. Okay. My next point is I need more context on these Griffin people. Where did they come from? How do, how, what, you know, they, they were bad? I need to know a little bit more about them. I need to know more about why Violet's mother kept them a secret from the wider squadron. If they're supposed to have all this information and we find out that Violet, you know, intercepts this um, letter, basically, her and Liam do, and see that, why are we not sending people here? Why are we not talking about that? Um, There's literally a raid happening and people are dying like why are we not being sent there because even though they're in school they're still like called out as like frontline people like last resort people well even while they're training like that's the whole point so why why is that information we're we're not going to talk about another thing is i think that violet's mom was inflicted with a venom wound when she was pregnant with Violet, which would explain her paleness, a lack of color in her hair, how it seems to just be leached from color, um, even when it grows out, which is in like the last battle, you know, the venom are sucking life out, right? Like they're sucking life and draining it from what it is. But Violet's power that's being channeled through Tarin is light. So it's to bring light back in, right? It's supposed to breathe it back in versus take it out. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work because he tells her light, like light bringer or light bear or whatever it is, you know, like there's something that like the dragons know that she doesn't know. Why is it that her magic magic is able to take them out? Um, I also need to know, and Darna's new ability. So Andarna is like this cute, sweet little like dragon that's just like, hello, I I just thank you for saving me, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Um, but she has the power of time, right? She has the power to stop and hold time, but only for short increments because if the amount of power that it takes, it drains her so badly. So after this last battle, Indarna is drained so much that she literally, like, blacks out, essentially. And then she grows almost full grown. So it's like, does she have the power of time anymore? Does she lose that power? Because apparently, like, the hatchlings and the type of dragon that she is, they're supposed to be, like, at their most potent when they're little, but nobody knows anything else about them. Like, does that mean that all their magic goes away? Or does it morph into something else? Or because she's bonded to Tarin and Sergale, you know, uh, Zayden's dragon. Because they had that weird, like, family bond or whatever going on between them, which that's interesting. Um, Does her new ability 
does it work in relation to Taran's gift that he's given Violet, which is thunder and lightning? Is she going to be able to breathe new in is what I want to know. Also, the whole thing about this mated dragon crap, that I was like, what? Like, your dragons are, are going at it, and now you are, like, getting those skills. What? That was weird. That was weird. I was like, excuse me? Um, and then when Liam dies, that was my big thing. When Liam dies, I was very devastated because Liam didn't need to die. Other people could have died. But, like, <laughs> Liam did not need to die. Um... And I felt for for them, like, so much because he was the first, like, true, like, friend that she had um, and just all of this other stuff, right? And, you know, um, yeah, so, and I really liked him. And I think that Violet is going to be brought back in for the next school year as a squad leader for the um, Flame Quadrant because she has to take care of Sloan, which is... Liam's sister. She made a promise to do that. So that all needs to happen somehow, some way for me to be okay. Okay. Also, also, there is a little tidbit. Um, if you read the beginning of the text and in the end of the text, there is a part that says the following text has been faithfully transcribed from Navarian into modern language by Yanessa Neilworth curator of the scribe quadrant at bad sky at war college all events are true names have been preserved to honor the courage of those fallen and may their souls be commended to malik janessa is her friend okay janessa mm-hmm. is her scribe friend okay literally so, so you know you saying? so what do you mean i i think Janessa had a situation with Liam because that, that was brought up a little bit. I think they had a thing. I think that um, Janessa is going to be the main catalyst in documenting everything because she's best friends with Violet from the scribes because like, they already have a relationship there. So she's not going to misinterpret the information that's being documented because she's pulling it from the source versus okay. some other generated um you know story or whatever because the the scribes are keeping you know the data like they're keeping the time and writing it all down or whatever so it's like i feel like the words that are now going to be documented are going to be truth versus whatever okay. other garbage they've been fed okay you know what like all their theories made me think that you should probably be this woman's editor because all the stuff that you brought up actually makes the book sound good but she doesn't focus on any of that right. like the the wyvern thing and i didn't even think about like you know the mom like being intentionally wounded um and i did have a um I did know there was some shenanigans going on with the brother and the necromancy thing because you don't just drop in necromancy for funsies that usually means something. I was yeah. shocked that he came back at the end because I think they may have, she may have led us to believe that he was definitely dead. Something happened, I can't remember, it was something with a friend, but I had guessed that that was, I had called shenanigans on that. Um, and yeah, just like your theories make the book sound better, but she doesn't really focus on that she focuses on the romance and not everything you mentioned is world building which she which is a way afterthought and if she had to just a little bit more i need yeah if she had to just focus a little bit more on the world building you know there would have been some creativity here and a a better book but she decided not to do that yeah i think that this book or the I think this series is going to either be um, driven by the people who are reading it to help aid in the, the writing process, or it's already written and we're all screwed and we just have high hopes and theories don't mean jack squat. Well, the second one's going to be out soon, right? November or October. Yeah, that's very yeah, quick. Yeah, there's a whole big thing. Someone dissected, like, the cover, and I don't know how much of it I'm like, it's believable. It's believable, but I'm like... 
are you going too far? Like, or yes. is this going too far? Yes. Only because I feel like, again, like everything that I stated, like, it's like, you know, those are valid things that like, you know, I feel like we should know in order for it to be better. But I'm like, now we're pulling out stuff from like, you know, the iron squad was violet squad. Flame is now a part of her blah, blah, like all of this stuff. I'm like, are we pulling too much from that? Or is that true? Like yeah, maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, I don't I know. guess you'll find just, out. Uh, when book two comes out and she doesn't answer half of the stuff that you said, then you'll know. Right. Because right. she wouldn't exactly. be influenced I mean, by the readers if it's, you know, it's already written. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we need more mirror content, to be honest, her sister. Like, are the kids all going to rebel against the mom? Because that would be new. That would be a new tactic. Like, are you going to get, are you going to say that you're going to get all three Sorengale heirs? Uh-oh. Little stuff like that that I'm like, you know. Where is... You're freezing. All kind of overtook the mom. But I don't know if yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. So. You kind of went out. You froze. So say what you said right before you said the mom. Say that again. Oh, I just think that it would be interesting if the kids did, in fact, rebel against the mother. If there was a joint unity in that, I could see that not happening, um, which would be terrible because I feel like they're, like, really good people. But I don't know much about Brennan. But, I mean, he cared enough about Mira to, like, send her with all of this stuff before she got into Vazgaia, you know, and then was told to do the same for Violet, you know. So it's like... He obviously knew, right? He obviously knew some stuff. Mira obviously trusts him enough. So I feel like it could be a suede. I don't know. I did like the fact, this is my last thing. I like the fact that she literally had a vest of dragon scales. That whole thing was awesome. That basically gave her, like, this immunity to save her life. And that it was recognized by the other dragons that are part of that clan. That was interesting. I was like, oh, I'm here for it. Like, this isn't just some you know, oh, my dragon gave you scales, you know, to help you or whatever. It was actually recognizable. And I need more of Taran's backstory. That's all I have to say. This big old baddie dragon's been around an old grouch, which he, if you listen to the audiobook with him, it's hilarious because they, (laughs) he just, it sounds like a grandpa, like, bantering with his granddaughter, essentially. Like, get it together. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to make us look bad. Or, I don't know. So, I want to know more about him and um, Stiegel, which is Zayden's dragon. So, anyway, that's all I have to say about Um, this book. I feel like I had a lot of, like, little mini tidbit notes, more so than other things. Because I'm like, now I need to know. The only spoilery well it's not spoilery but um I don't like that the POV switched at the end unless the next book is either dual POVs or it's Zayden's point of view I think that's lazy writing when you switch POV that's why it should be in third person um and then the last line is she supposed to be freaking Katniss like welcome to the revolution are you kidding me that is straight out of Hunger Games come on I hated that. Yeah. I was so mad at that, the end of that book. I was like... <sighs> yeah, I think, like, there were so many moments where I was like, um, you know, like, have I read this before? Like, is this why it's giving me, like, nostalgia vibes? That might be another reason why I liked it, is because it does bring me back into some of those worlds. You know, like, I listened to a book talk, a booktuber... Oh, I forget her name. She's got blonde hair. She's been around for a while, but she referenced how, like, there is a part, you know, in a Hunger Games where, like, Peta and Katniss will have, like, you know, those real moments. Like, this is real. Like, it's real right now that I'm I'm saving you. Like, I'm, I'm still here for you, right? Like, where they would have those moments. Um, and I feel like we did get weirdly that from Zayden and Violet when it was like supposed to be a thing like we were supposed to be on like team go them where they're not like oh my gosh I hate you oh my gosh I love you um 
this other book too where she did put that like um monologue of monica gellner going i love ross i hate ross i love ross <laughs> it's like that sounds like that <laughs> um just because <laughs> just because of everything that All right. Well, you read book two and let me know. Dan Dan was not her man. Or Dean was not her man. Like, come on. He's too protective of her. It's not going to be a thing. No. (laughs) So. Okay. Well, do you have anything else that you want to say? Nope. That's it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, you guys. We hope that you... um, I just enjoyed our book discussion because Don and I like to hash it out as much as we can. And we're still friends at the end of it. <laughs> Even though internally we're like, can't you see my side? <laughs> but it's okay. But thank you so much for joining in and we will catch you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.